but I do know that I've gotten 20 years worth of moments with this philosophy. So the philosophy that you brought up about having control when you're on the field and being in live entertainment, I think applies directly to that build of that first rock match and the moment when after weeks and weeks and weeks of just fruity pebbles, this, that, you know, getting everybody to be like, he's not cool, I am cool. That one moment happens where you bring up the promo on the forearm and it's like the whole world changes in an instant how did that feel when you were doing it did you make the decision in the moment and were there ramifications of that so that's a good question uh and again that's your perspective right i'd like to think that i gave every chance to speak my best the thing with our matchup and i think the thing that some people might not have seen was it is supposed to be Michael Jordan, LeBron James, both in their prime. To do that, in this scenario, you do not have to elevate The Rock. Mm -hmm. he, is an, he is and always will be in his own universe. I don't have to give any more steam to that rocket. Mm -hmm. To make the billing the billing, you need to elevate John. So I was punching from underneath, but still punching and just looking for whatever. And, and once again, Dwayne was doing so many things like he always does. He splits atoms and makes it work. All I was doing was WWE. That's it. And laser focused and realizing this is the opportunity of a lifetime and realizing also that like this isn't uh, – uh, this isn't Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. Right now, this is Mike Tyson, Peter McNeely. And this isn't going to draw money. So, F it. Here we go. And, of course, there are ramifications, and it led to some, some genuine emotions between the two of us. But when it all began to melt away was when we decided the path of the match the day before. And Dwayne could see how easy... I, not only how easy I was to work with, but how adamant I wanted to, like, these are great ideas. Let's do them. Let's do whatever, man. Like, I want to make sure you're comfortable. I can do this, but I don't know. What do you think? And then afterwards, not in the performance, not like being too smart or winking at the camera or like, F this guy. No, being fully invested in, in the whole body of work, losing with humility, with embarrassment, and staying there and being degraded and humiliated in front of a stadium to give rock his moment the moment the ice began to melt was right after when the first thing i did was went to apologize to his mom and said being in the business i hope now you can understand i just wanted to sell tickets and i'm sorry if i made you feel a certain way that was not my intention but also from my perspective it was kind of like a surprise party where if i told you the gig i think maybe we would have ruined some stuff she gave me a great hug and told me thank you and then the next thing i went is to say the exact same thing to Dwayne. And he couldn't have been more gracious. And I know that the build wasn't easy on him. He, he has the world in, in, in the palm of his hand. And to come back and be kicked in the nuts by some cheap shot kid who's trying to make a name for himself, that sucks. He's trying to give to the business. Like, what is this guy? I get his perspective. What the F is this guy doing? I'm trying to, trying to do the business a favor here. But then I explained my perspective to him. And obviously... I couldn't just be like, I'm authentic. I had to prove it out there, prove my authenticity. And then say like, hey man, I'm just, I just wanted to pack the place and I just wanted people to be interested and I did it the wrong way. We should have collaborated. We should have talked in hindsight. And I should have asked you, what's the best way to make us equals? Instead, I did it myself and in turn created a, a, a huge space between us and that was my fault. Wow, wow. Did you notice the writing on the monitor before you went out there or in the ring, in the moment? I had someone point it out to me, oh. and it was 30 seconds before my music played. So I had something planned and just, you know, threw it away. And, and that's also what I love about WWE. It, it, you have to – fans can see through the BS. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in your character, it's what I said to Austin Theory. Dude, you are young. You are athletic. 
you will work for this company. You'll do interviews. You'll go X, Y, and Z. I don't believe what you do when you're out there. I don't. I said it to him personally before I said it publicly. Oof. No, I'm serious. I said, yeah, the, it's a tough pill in, to swallow. In a room with Austin Theory, I said, the reason I came back to Boston is because you can't do this yourself yet. You cannot carry a WrestleMania promo yourself yet. And if you fail, we waste the equity that I'm willing to give. And if in that match I get hurt, I hold up a production, which puts 300 people out of work. Let's do this right. Let, let's get some equity here. And then you have to start thinking about the angles of, well, what's the most important thing? And what are we really trying to tell? And what's our story? And Okay, I don't, I don't believe what you do. That's what I'm going with. 